What's up guys, how y'all doing today? So today again, it's gonna be a special day. Very interesting video. I'm actually gonna meet with a, um, a fellow foreigner who lives here in Medellin and uh, by the name of Josh. I believe he lives in Imbigao, around that area. And the cool thing about him is, is he has multiple businesses running here in Colombia. So we're gonna go meet with him. We're gonna talk about his experience here in Colombia, Medellin, and his experience running multiple businesses. And I believe one of his businesses is really cool. He actually finds old classic cars here, antique cars here in Colombia, re repairs them, remodels them, whatever you want to call it, and then he sells it and ships it to the States. He actually has a market in the States that he sells to. So hopefully we'll get to check out a few of his cars that he's uh, refurbished, remodeled uh, when we meet with him. So you guys stay tuned, it's gonna be super cool. I'm actually gonna grab the bus because I can't take the Metro today. I'm taking the same bus, Cal does. We're gonna get off an Agua Catala station and then he's gonna pick us up. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be picking me up in one of his really cool antique cars because you guys know I like antique cars. All right guys, stay tuned. I'll be right back with y'all, yeah? Guys, we're coming up and uh, this brings back memories, man. This Bronco, check it out. That's sweet. What's up? Yeah. All right, we got it. What's up, Josh? How you doing? We're coming up to his place. Check out this Bronco, all nicely done inside. My dad almost bought me a Bronco when I turned 16, but he didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. I wish he did. But uh, yeah, we're going to his place, gonna check it out, and also talk to uh, Josh about uh, some of his business ventures and all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be very interesting. Y'all stay tuned, yeah? Check it out, guys. So this is the, as uh, Josh is calling it, the OJ Bronco. If you guys are old enough, you'll remember that uh, scenario that went through. It just needs to be white, though. And you had the other one you sent me a picture, it was like the green one, right? 1970. Bronco as well. 1970 Bronco, But yeah. it was dropped, right? It was, no, it wasn't dropped, but it didn't have a top. It had like a, the, the, car, the, the carpa. Ah, right, okay, for a convertible yeah. kind of thing. Exactly, you can take it off. Remember? Nice. So we're up in Envigado. What part of Envigado we're in? Uh, this is called um, Loma de Esmeraldal. Loma de Esmeraldal. Yes. There we go. So you guys wanted me to come up to Envigado, the nicer parts. The thing about up here is it's very hard to walk to. I don't have a vehicle, I don't have a motorcycle, so for me to walk from the station all the way up here would have been very hard, correct? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> a lot <laughs> but, of sweat and a lot of time. But good thing we have uh, guys like Josh, I have a Bronco that can take me up here. So stay tuned, let's go check out this place. I almost got attacked by a dog, but it's okay. Home sweet home. Usually dogs love me. Usually dogs love me. Hold on. Hold on. Look at tail. Yeah, but because when you wear a mask like this and a dog can't see your whole face, they, get, they don't know you. Dogs can read the facial expression. So I took my mask down for that. So you guys don't be tripping on the comments. And I don't think I can give the dog COVID. <laughs> hey, buddy. Okay, we're good. We're friends now. Sweet. He didn't bark at people until this whole thing started. Really? It's probably because of the mask. It's the mask because dogs can read. Well, they, they read facial expressions. Yeah. Check this out, guys. This is super freaking nice. So this is what you call a duplex because yeah. it's two stories. Yeah, three bedroom. Nice, man. And you share this with uh, two roommates? I do, but they live in the States and they can't come here right now. <laughs> they don't have visas. So he's, he's lucky because he has two roommates who are paying for this, helping out pay, right? And he's getting to uh, yeah, enjoy yeah, it. There's something half. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. If anybody wants to share an apartment with me and not live there, I'm all down. All right, here's this kitchen. All right, let's check out the balconies. As you guys know, I always love. Oh my Lord have mercy. Check this out. Guys, my Lord have mercy. This is a view and a half. And it's really close to SmartFit. Unfortunately, it's closed right now. And it looks like it's a door that opens up all the way. And how much are you paying for this, you know, my Uh, 3.5, so like $900 a month. 3.5 million pesos, 900 bucks a month, or $920 a month for this, uh, how many bedrooms? Three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. You Three might bedrooms, go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, I want to do a quick tour and then we're going to... Maybe 1,700 square feet. 1,700 square feet, three bedrooms, and how many baths? Three baths? Uh, yeah, there's a full bathroom in the, uh, I don't want to call it the maid's quarters, in the uh, service room. In the small room over here, so three bathrooms. So yeah, so you, there you go, guys, 900 bucks. Kind of like the penthouse, I believe, because it's the top floor, yeah? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do a quick tour of his apartment, and then uh, we're going to go talk to him. Now, he wasn't expecting me today, so if it's dirty, guys, just understand. So let's check it out. Oh, it's not dirty, is it? Fix up his bed. Nice small bedroom here. Another bedroom. Very nice. I like it. 
got the bathroom. Okay, and then another bedroom. It looks like the master bedroom with its own bathroom right here. So it looks like that those two bedrooms share a bathroom. And then this bath bedroom has its own bathroom. And there's a bedroom, small bedroom with the bathroom there. Now the small bedrooms used it's called the maid's quarters because back in the day it was very common to have a maid living in the house with you uh, full time. So they would sleep there, eat there, all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's becoming less and less common. Anyways, guys. Let's go talk to Josh. Let's go find out his, uh, his story. And I think after this, we might go to other locations as well. So this might be a long video, but I think it's gonna be a good video. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, so I'm sitting here with uh, Josh and I have my mask down, so I'm drinking water. And plus, uh, got a little distance between us, so we're all good. And my do the dog's my friend, so. Lulo, Lulo, Lulo. Lulo. Like the fruit. Like the Lulo, like the fruits. There we go. <laughs> so Josh, tell us, tell us about yourself a little bit. I mean, what, what brought you here in Medellin? Why did you choose Colombia? You got, you got enough uh, space on that, on that card? I have two extra batteries in my pocket. All right, cool. Um, no, I was coming here a lot. I lived in Miami uh -huh. for a while, and I was coming here a lot, and my ex-girlfriend was from here. Uh -huh. So then all my, basically my circle of friends ended up being from here. Uh -huh. Her family became my family. Uh, my friend's family became my family. I just fell in love with places when I was in Miami. So then I started to come here. Right. And I was like, wow, there's a whole city full of people that's awesome. Uh -huh. And uh, this was 2000. 8, 2009. First time I came was 2005, but that was before I had really became ingrained with the, the people from here. I just went with a friend just mm. to come check it out before there were tourists. Mm. I think there was three tourists in two weeks I was here in 2005. Three, which you could tell was, uh, you know, next to my head. Anyways, so I started to come here a lot um, because of, you know, my ex-girlfriend was from here. And I just wanted to see what it was like. And uh, I came in 2008 and I told myself I would come back at some point to live. You know, I didn't have a date set. Yeah. Um, 2008, that's a long time ago. 2008. So I lived in Miami from 08 until like 2000, so I moved here in 2016. Nice. Originally from Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just, uh, 2015, I had some money saved up. I was tired of working in the office and I, uh, you know what, I'm going to go to Medellin. What were you doing Medellin. before in Miami? Uh, what, I worked at the Social Security Disability Advocates Office. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for so, the government? So, no, no, no. No. The advocacy part. Okay. Not lawyers, but people that help people apply for benefits. For um for people with social apply for social security and disability benefits. Okay. So we go we go to like hearings against the government or to uh -huh. to prove to the government. I can keep it down. I'll put my um, okay. All right. So so ba so basically I did that for maybe like six years in Miami. Uh huh. Um, that's where I kind of got a base for Spanish. I didn't speak it at all, but there was enough clients that you know it's all Cubans and Colombians and Venezuelans. For sure. In Miami, anyways, and I looked enough Spanish where people went in the streets would start talking to me in Spanish. So I learned in that office and in Miami, like the basics. So with that, I came here and uh, never took any classes in Spanish. Kind of learned Spanish just from, you know, your brain adjusts, right? Mm -hmm. Survival technique. You know, mm -hmm. you learn the language because you have to. Right. So instead of taking classes, I just kind of learned from my friends that were Colombian who didn't speak English. Um, they didn't really have a choice, right? That's the best way. Sometimes that's the best way. Exactly. So yeah. I moved here with that money I had saved. I started a uh, tourism company here. Okay. Um, focusing on trips to uh, Guatate, trips to Jardín, uh, the, the coffee farms out there. Yeah. Uh, Cuatrimotos, Parapientes, uh, sorry, ATVs and uh, it, paragliding. Paragliding. Things like that. Trips like that. Um, I would also help rent out apartments and large houses here in the area. A lot of the bachelor party stuff, which kind of was the reason I got out of it. It was tiring. And, uh, <laughs> You know I can I mean? imagine, man. Yeah. So I actually ended up building a team here of, of people that I work with, drivers and hosts and things like that, to kind of handle those groups. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have to go around with them as much. And I sacrificed a little bit of money for that piece of not having to be with people here, right. partying and things like that. Um, and what else? And I also, at the same time I came here, I got into uh, restoring cars, classic cars. Well, let me ask you about the tourism. So, like, to get into tourism, did you actually buy the vehicles, like the vans, or did you no, rent no. them out? No, I found or? drivers that already had them. They already so, had the... Yeah, the, so they would charge me, uh, sorry, they would charge me, like, a daily yeah. fee. Okay. And I would, you know, I would set up a whole package for a trip, and I would just make sure to include their daily fee in that package price. Nice. You know what I mean? So drivers who had, like, larger trucks or vans or... To just, I even had a few taxi drivers that I would just send to pick people up from the airport, just like on call, mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I build like a team, just progressively. You that's, know what I mean? that's actually really good business right there. Yeah, for sure. How how did you promote good. that business? Like a uh, website or social uh, social networking. Social, social networking. Social networking completely through Facebook and Instagram. You could run ads. 
I ran ads, targeted marketing in the States. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest with you, I'd say 50% of my business came from online and 50% came from references. That's all, yeah, referrals. The unbelievable growth that happened in 2016, 2017 here with everybody wanting to come yeah. to Columbia and Medellin, I saw exponentially, just, just like that. Just from so many friends, yo, they would come here in groups of 10, 12, mm -hmm. and then they would go home and tell 20 people each, right? So you yeah. know, you know, you're know, you having a base of 200 people that are hearing about that trip. From that comes another trip. So I would get business from online for sure, but there was a large percentage that was just uh, referrals. But you got out of the business, you're not in that anymore. Uh, you know what I did? I Because I still get so much uh, interest, or before this started, I was still getting a ton of interest. Sure. Um, I kept that team of people on call, uh -huh. uh, tour drivers, um, a lot of people that own houses and apartments here and things like that. So people still call me like, can you set up a trip? So I'll basically just charge them a base fee and then I'll give all the work to everyone else. So I make a little bit less because I'm not doing any of the legwork anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just basically designing the trip for the person. You know? so, nice. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that. No, no, that was, that was, that's about it. So you, then you, went, you, you left the tourism business and you kind of worked on the side and now you went to the car business. Correct. Yeah, well, at the same time that I started tourism business, uh -huh. I saw the market for these old Toyota trucks in the States that were very popular about five years ago. Still popular, but the market has been a little bit saturated because people know it's no secret, so you guys can... What kind of what kind of truck was it? It was the FJ uh, Toyota from the 1970 to 1982. 1968 to 1982 were the most popular. It had the highest resale. Value. And those were being those were being sold in the states as well. The same model in the states in that time. Yes, they, they existed in the states. Usually, when a car exists in the states, at some point, it has a much larger market. There's some really cool old cars. You know, if you Super see, cool. They don't have the market in the states because they never existed. That's the thing. Like I, I've, I've walked by so many times, I've seen like these old Land Cruisers. Yeah. That look like Jeeps. I restored and sold one in the states, and but there's we no, made money, but not nearly what we made. On there's the not a big market because that wasn't in the states. No, it's a tiny market. Tiny market. That's but the problem. It's, such it's, a, a, cool it's a such a cool car, guys, and I've shown you guys a few times. I'll show you pictures of the one I restored. Right. I restored one of those in That's 1968. Freaking awesome. Beautiful one. That's exactly. freaking awesome. Um. So anyway, so I got into that. Uh, restored four or five of those Toyotas. You know, uh -huh. they're time consuming. You know, you have to get someone to do the body, someone to do the interior, someone to do the engine, and you gotta spend the time searching out the people that know these cars because you always wanted to bring it to, you know, Joe Schmo and whatever uh, body shop because there's a lot of detail that goes into those cars that the, uh, the collectors in the States, they really want the car original and well done. They pay attention to a lot of details. You know? They call it frame off restoration, right? So frame comes off the chassis, you're replacing all the instruments, you're uh, replacing a lot of the screws and things like that. So I uh, got into that and then um, with my brother-in-law invested in some properties. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a branch off from the tourism where we turned them into Airbnbs. So we bought a large house in Envigado mm -hmm. that was like a three level house that yeah. we split into five apartments. Mm -hmm. So um, working on that for the past year and a half, kind of that's when I started to leave the uh, the actual uh, tourism stuff and tours and things like that on the side. Um, so we also bought a cabin in Guatapé. Mm -hmm. That was like a real rundown, like a prefabricado. How do you say that? Uh, prefab. Prefab house that was built on like a beautiful piece of land, waterfront on the lake, but the house was was really trash. So we put a very loop. So Josh here, he didn't speak Spanish before he came to Colombia, and he learned Spanish here so well that he's forgetting English. <laughs> That's <laughs> there every every day I stutter to find certain it, English words. It, it's all, it's all good, man. It's a good sign. Continue. <laughs> so you, uh, old prefab house. Yeah. So it was an old prefab house post, posted on like a beautiful plot of land that has a ton of access to the water. Uh -huh. About a little over half an acre. Nothing too big, but plenty of space. Um, we put. If I tell you, we put six thousand dollars into it, uh -huh. and it made it into this incredible cabin. Nice. I'm talking about that's that's like you know, redoing the uh, the exterior, all the landscaping, um, adding two more bedrooms. Six thousand dollars. I want to say amplifying. You know, say they say amplificar. Like yeah. To make something bigger. How do you, uh, <laughs> you know, we we expanded the living room and, right. and stuff like that. Um, so so we made the house. An absolute hit on Airbnb. It's been a huge, it was a huge success before all this started. Obviously, our house in Envigado is actually still full of foreigners that haven't left. So is that it's not it's not a building. It's actually a old house it's that you old house that we you made into apartments, 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 separate individual apartments. First floor we left the same. They're gigantic, like two thousand yeah, square feet. Yeah, massive. Yeah, those Envigado houses. Are really right. Cool. Um, 
the first floor is 2,000 square foot, three, three bedroom apartment. Uh -huh. That we left just as a large flat. Uh -huh. We've had a ton of families stay there from uh, Germany, yeah, family from Kazakhstan. <laughs> we had a uh, all, all over the world, man. Um, we've had stay in that one, larger one. And the other units uh, is a uh, one bedroom, uh -huh. a two bedroom, a studio, and then another two bedroom where we've had a lot of interchangeable people people coming to study Spanish that want to stay in a traditional yeah. Colombian neighborhood because yeah. it's a real Colombian neighborhood. Super, yeah. Um, so we managed to keep that full throughout this pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Um, we managed to keep that full. So so that's been that's been good for us, but the Puerto Pay house has been completely empty because the Pueblos are closed. Okay. You know I mean? So how much did it cost to purchase the house, if you don't mind me asking? Which, which one? The one the in Vigado? One in Vigado. Yeah. The one in Vigado was at the time 770 million. Which, so you guys do the math <clears throat> to convert it. I can it. tell you. Well, at the time, that was about 250,000 because the dollar was closer to 3,000 to 1. Okay. About 250,000. It was uh, almost 6,000 square feet. 6, Three floors, square feet. and they were independent homes. They were, uh -huh. already, they were already uh addresses, independent apartments. Okay. So it's like we were kind of buying three flats. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. three flats, that would have been about $85,000 each. Uh huh. Um, and then we bought the pay home on the lake. We paid, at the time, I think it was. U.S. dollars, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Beautiful plot of land right on the water. Um, and today, that would I wish it was today because now the dollar is much stronger. Would be about a hundred. We paid about three sixty, which is a little sure. under a hundred thousand now. So the house in Vigado that we bought for two, right, it's like two fifty roughly, would be right now two hundred. Mm -hmm. This was a year and a half ago. That's a much change. It's, it's That's there. a great point, guys. Right, so the, the dollar it went up to four thousand pesos a dollar, and then it's down to thirty five hundred. So Whenever the peso or the dollar is strong, that's when it's the best time to buy, as you get the best opportunity. But then, don't wait too long, because you think, oh, it's gonna go back up, and it keeps going down. So it's, you, it's like playing the market almost, Yeah, because right? property doesn't vary here much. To be honest no. with you, in, in Colombia and in Medellin in general, the property values do not, there's no bubble. There hasn't been like a huge bubble here ever. Not ever, but in, in recent history, there really hasn't been a, a major uh, real estate bubble. It's possibly because everybody buys cash mostly. That's, right. that's the reason. Right. To get a mortgage here is, <laughs> Right, my girlfriend got um, a loan, but she's gonna pay it off in five years. So pay it off in five years as quick as possible. The whole mindset here in Colombia is either you buy cash or you buy it and you pay it off as soon as possible. And she's 26 years old, she's buying an apartment in five years. I mean, that's impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, that's imp okay. With interest rates here, you gotta pay off quicker, you're gonna end up paying. Yeah, interest rates here are high, they're high. Um, let me ask you about the vehicles, go back to that. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, you have to know the right people to do the remodeling, you have to have the right connections, but when you first started, did you did you get into it by yourself as a foreigner, or did you have like a partner that was Colombian? Okay, so my best friend in Miami, who's Paisa. Okay. But he's, uh, they say Paisa Chiriao, uh -huh. which means, you know, he's, he's been in the States too long, so he's, when he comes back here and they, they call him Chiriao, <laughs> Americanized Paisa. Anyways, right. he um, went in with me on the cars initially. Okay. He goes back and forth, he's in Miami, it's a three hour flight, so he came down here a lot. And we both saw the cars selling for what they were in the States and we're like, okay, wow, let's try to build a foundation here for this and find digetis, uh, find body shops and mechanics, mechanics yeah. to handle all stuff. So we kind of hit the pavement and just went to Barrio Colombia, which is where the majority, I don't know if you've been there on the videos, where the majority of the body shops and the, um, and the mechanics are, are in Barrio Colombia, which is next to Premium Plaza, in the 30th, uh, yeah. Ciudad de Rio, yeah. in between Premium Plaza and Ciudad de Rio is Barrio Colombia, which is where the majority of all the targets, right, right, the right, body shops and things right. are. So we just hit the pavement there, asking around, who knows how to, you know, refurbish these old cars? Who knows, you know, La, La Tonería? And he, spe he speaks perfect Spanish. Yeah, he's Paisa. He's okay, perfect, yeah. sweet. He's okay. Yeah. At that time, I, my Spanish was no. Yeah, could, could, think about it. Like, my question is, if you would have gone by yourself with bad Spanish. Do you think they would try to rip you off, kind of like put the price up? And they ripped us off, knowing that he's they not. They still he's, ripped you he's off. Good. He's you know Amer Americanized paisa, and I'm a gringo. They still they didn't rip us off. They give you like a little higher you price than it should be. Off for the margins that you make on the car, are you really being ripped off? I mean, you're you're paying more than maybe what a local would pay. Right. But they also know that you can pay more, and they also know what you're going to make on the car. So uh -huh. you got to you got to consider that when they're pricing this out for you. You're a foreigner, so they usually know that you're planning on restoring the car, sending it up north, and they can get online and see the prices of what the car sell for. So if That's it's different tough. if a Colombian came there right. and was like, I want to restore my baby. You know? right. And this is going to stay here, they're not going to make that much money on it. So a lot of people will probably call it a ripoff. I call it, you know, I don't know. 
people knowing the market. Not knowing or or you not knowing the market enough. Exactly. Kind of thing. So I guess I guess not a rip off guys, but I guess to take it back, to take what away from that is know what a pro, what the product should be priced at, and also if the margins are super high, as Josh saying, maybe be a little bit lenient, not not get too fl uh, flustered, I guess. But uh, yeah, don't jump at the first offer, the, the first price they give you. It's that that being said, I also do you know negotiate. negotiate yeah. Okay. Negotiating the price is the toughest negotiator, maybe in Latin America. People say right, the best the best businessman in Latin America. So yeah, and you're not gonna and wait. they do and they do with a smile. Oh yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. they're your best friend. Right? They use all the sayings in the world, make yeah. you laugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is everybody. This is the guy who, who, who changes tires <laughs> right. to, to the businessman, you know, right. in the top floor. But that's not that's totally genuine guys. That's not being fake. There's they're good people here, but they're also wonderful negotiators, knowing how to do it in a very friendly way. So hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's very it's so that's super interesting. So out of okay, let me ask you about the um I'm jumping around here. But the two investment properties you made, like in, in Vigao, the house here and the one in Guatape. Yeah. Which one has been your best investment? ROI wise, like return yeah. on investment wise, they're very close. Really? And comparatively to a lot of Airbnbs, you look at like the, every country kind of has like what you can expect from an Airbnb return on investment. Mm -hmm. They're both doing between 10 and 15% uh -huh. our, our return on investment, which is very high for a rental property. Nice. Um, sometimes even higher. I, I think the first year, it was lower, but the second year in Guatape, uh, we got to around 18% ROI on the property, which is pretty incredible to compare comparatively to, especially to the states where you're looking at like seven or eight um, percent mm -hmm. as a good ROI on a, on a rental property. That's actually Sometimes excellent. lower, to be honest with you. Well, like, com like a comparative rental property, like, they, like Airbnb style rental property. Yeah. Wow, that's, yeah, that's yeah, freaking yeah, excellent. Yeah. So, do you manage that property in Guatape, or do you have someone over there managing uh, it for you? We, we got a fan. Yeah, you know what happened? I um. I went out there when we first, we first got the property. Um, my brother, it's with my brother-in-law. He's, mm. he's a major investor. I'm a partial investor. Sure. Um, so I was doing all the groundwork. So I went out to the pueblo and we bought the property. The house was, you know, I told you, prefabricated, um, not too nice. So we went into the uh, the local hardware store. And I mm -hmm. asked the cashier and I was like, "Can you send me, you know, who, who's your who's your uh, your best um, construction guy out here?" Or who's a good construction guy you can, you can suggest for me? I don't want a company. I want a guy that works, you know, that that, that works on his own. Sure. So they gave me a number for uh -huh. this guy Fernando. Uh -huh. well, you guys will meet. We're gonna go out to the house one day. Maybe another video. You'll meet Fernando. Who's the, We're gonna go do more videos with Josh about his business that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments. If you guys want to see more videos with Josh? And I'll always, I'm pretty sure you guys want to. Yeah, for sure. So, so I, anyway, so I met this guy. He redid the whole house with a team of people. Um, some, some Venezuelan really good workers that actually lived out there in the Pueblo. You know, in the Pueblo also are, are Venezuelan refugees. And actually, some really good workers. The electrician that did re the, rewired the house was a Venezuelan. Anyways, <clears throat> we had um, we had them redo the house. You know, partial renovate, partial restoration, renovation. Mm -hmm. And when he was done, he was like, "Well, you need someone to run this, right?" Mm -hmm. He was like, "Well, I can, you know, I can have my wife do the cleanings, and I'll do your check-ins." So what I do, is so I don't have to go an hour and a half away every That's, time someone comes. Yeah. He, uh, they usually touch base with him, the clients that book their Airbnb or yeah. some, you know, go on Facebook as well. He speaks English? No. Okay. Great. <laughs> uh, no. So he, they'll touch base on WhatsApp. Use uh -huh. translator if they don't speak English. Sure. Um, and he hasn't had an issue for two years now. Okay. Or you know, a lot, I'll be honest with you, a lot of Airbnb clients are Latinos, either from the states or Colombians that are coming from. Oh, for sure. What the pay? What the pay is such a great destination to go to. Actually, it's one of the, like my girlfriend's favorite place to go visit. So it's, it's super favorite, great, great place for Colombians to go as well. Number two most visited place in Colombia. Yeah. To yeah. I yep. I believe it. It's beautiful. So, there. so he takes care of his wife takes care of the cleaning, and mm -hmm. he takes care of all the check-ins. And he's one of these country prices that are just, like the most welcoming, inviting people. And you know, he makes little side hustles while he's out there. He go, he'll go do like a shopping for the house, or bring them liquor in the night if they need it, or. We have uh, kayaks out there and jet skis, so he'll come and set that up for them and stuff like that. So he awesome. has little ways to make money on top of what we already. And also giving you there. giving you very good ratings. Yeah. Oh my. Because I mean, we're, that's, we're four point nine. That's four point nine on Airbnb. That's awesome. And only because of one one difficult guest that we had. I'm not going to get into that story. It always happens. You can't make yeah, everybody happy. There's always one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that house was running was self 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 sufficient. My English is terrible. Um, but the help the house is running itself. Um, before all this happened, and it was you know bringing money to that whole family out there, which they you know they're they're a, a lower income 
country family, but just awesome people, and it was really helping them out. So that's awesome. The property is big enough to build another cabin on. So our next project, when things start to get back to normal, we're going to build another cabin on the same property that we're also going to rent out. So they'll end up having, uh, hopefully, get to a hotel. We want to put floating cabins. That's a whole other story that we want to put on the water down there. Yeah. That are just like single rooms for people that want to come stay out there and, and sleep on the water. Nice. Um, there's hotels that are already doing it out there, and uh -huh. we're going to work on that next. So hopefully. Uh, when you guys do a video in the future out there, we'll already be having those things in motion. Heck yeah, heck yeah. That is awesome. So you mentioned that your house here in Miguel has Eat people water, you know, so. go for it. You're talking more to me. <laughs> so now he understands. When I do videos and I'm walking and talking, I get super thirsty. Now he's living my life. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, you, like in, in Miguel, the, the house you have in Miguel has a family there now, right now, it's, it's occupied. Yeah, the house in Envigado has. <laughs> Look at this wide array of people. The house, the first floor has a family from Germany that's been there for six months. Nice. Um, they could have gone back from the humanitarian flight, but they were like, oh, we, we enjoy being here. We love these neighborhoods, so we're just gonna stay here. Um, the second floor has an American married to a Colombian woman that's doing surgery at the hospital across the street, uh -huh. uh, our, our cancer treatment at the hospital across the street. So they've been there for four months. Okay. And then on the third floor is a friend of mine from here that her boyfriend rented out he's from europe and her boyfriend rented out the, the top floor there nice so that, that's that's has helped you get through this time unbelievable i can't i, I we've stayed at 100 percent occupancy in that house which is not what we expected when this whole that's thing happened amazing. we thought people were going to run back you know to where they're from and leave the house vacant and everybody was like no we're, we're just going to stay and stick it out and these aren't even people that have been here for years they're people that came here with plans to stay for a month well, or two months. There are a lot of people taking advantage of the like a extended tourism visa. Like, a tourism visa can only go three three months, and then you can stay for another three months. But people, are, some people, are just like, oh, great, I can stay in Colombia longer. So for sure, we've also dropped the prices significantly, uh, so it helps them out. We're not going to. That's good. Can't charge you the market value of the house. Is Especially so, like in the beginning, on. they were stuck in the house, so they couldn't go out. And, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you have to negotiate a little bit with them to let them. That's know, good. Feel better about it because you know they they could. There's a lot of, every, everybody's dropping prices in the, in the furnished apartment business right now. It's uh -huh. just what it is, right? Things were booming so much before all this happened. Um, you gotta take a hit for a little bit and keep your places full and keep people happy and make a little less money and hope that when things rebound, that uh, that karma for lowering the price bounces back on your side and things continue I, to roll like they were, you know? I think it will, I think it will. So, really will. out of all the business, you've done three businesses so far we talked about. Is there any other business out there you, yeah. you tried? <laughs> really? Yeah, man. I dabbled in revenue streams. I believe a lot in revenue streams, right? Not all the eggs in one basket. Sure. Um, also, this is more of just like a, not a consulting, but helping out some of my friends that live here in this house. Huh. Oh, we also run a business that um, helps people from Colombia get visas and work visas in the United States. Wow. We set up like a, um, it's funny, I'll give a short story. In Wisconsin, sure. has like a, a almost like a, there's, there's, uh, open, there's like, no unemployment. No, there's no, there's no unemployment. Unempl okay. It's like a zero almost. Okay. So they need workers in Wisconsin. So we set up kind of like a uh, streamline. Started this. This was all getting into place before we uh, when all this happened, and they could they they couldn't continue to come down here to set everything up. But basically, we're we're trying to set up a streamline of um, of workers from Colombia to go to the state to work for about a year or two, decent paying jobs, um, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And then after two years, they can apply for their for their permanent visa to stay in the states if they want to. So how did you discover this? They are uh, accountants and, and immigration attorneys in the states. So it wasn't I didn't create the job. So they basically have me here as somebody to help them with the transaction. So someone reached out stuff, to you, open the office and things like that. My, my these are my best friends in Miami. I okay, they yeah. knew about the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, they, they they saw the opportunity. They went to Wisconsin, met with people up there, some different companies up there, sure. trying to stream on employees. And they, they basically had me here to help them out, set up, do like the legwork, you know what I mean? Set up the bank accounts, get the visas, get the companies open, get the office set up, find employees here and things like that. That's so awesome. I basically been on that side. So that, that's another thing that just, not full time, but uh -huh. something that, you know, takes up my time and this is another revenue stream that I have here. <laughs> that is impressive, <laughs> it's a man. Bit, it's, a, it's a bit much, you know, a lot going on, but it keeps me busy <laughs> and um, if one thing fails, tourism now that it's not here uh -huh. I have these other things that are keeping me afloat that is awesome yeah. which of which of all those that that you enjoy the most though that you've done initially it was a tourism um but i'd say the cars because i've always liked cars uh -huh. and you, you know you see this car come in a rust bucket uh -huh. and then you see it come out like this showroom piece uh -huh. you know what i mean and the whole process is uh 
is more is more enjoyable, right? Dude, it's like those those that one show. There's a, a car. It was all those car shows that like rust buckets come yeah, in, yeah, they exactly. come out. Um, Pin my ride and my ride. Uh, the, the other you know, uh, Top Gear and all these other great shows that have they've been doing these shows forever, right? Uh huh. This is kind of a cooler thing because you get it from like a Colombian. A lot of them are like Fords and, and uh, Chevys that came from the U.S. in the 70s and 60s. I'm also restoring an old Chevy. I'll show you that when I'm done. Uh -huh. They came from the U.S. and came here, you know, uh -huh. lived their whole life here, and now they're going back to where they're from. So it's kind of a cool, you know, a cool uh, right. concept there. We might make a, um, what is it called? Pimp My Ride? What's, what's the other? Yeah, well, Pimp My Ride Columbia. We might make a Pimp My Ride Columbia here. Uh, bring exhibit, life. exhibit. I don't remember if he's still working. Do you remember the host? No. It was a rapper named Exhibit. I don't like Pimp My Ride. I like, because they made the cars too stupid looking. Yeah, they were uh, over the top. Uh, what's the other uh, shop, the car shops? There's, there? well, there's a, I can't remember. There's Chip, Chip Boost. These guys that had all these. There's like a guy with all the tattoos in Vegas. We're going to make a restore, uh, car restoration in Columbia uh, channel, and it's going to be freaking awesome. Actually, said, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> no, that might be in the works. We don't know. We'll see what we do there or not. not but it sounds idea. fun. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are interested at all, right, David, you'll get in contact with me. Yeah, we. Any cars you're interested in. I'll be the host um, of the channel. <laughs> what I do is, I don't know if I mentioned, I hit the Pueblos looking for yeah. the old cars because yeah. they're not easy to find. Right, so he goes, he goes out to the Pueblos and his Bronco. Uh, that'll be actually kind of fun going to the mountains and searching for old cars and stuff like that because you guys know when I'm doing my videos every time I see an old car I'm always pointed out so I have interest in that as well. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You find uh, you know buried treasures. You know like a Super American cool. Pickers. American, American Pickers. American Pickers. Yeah. They go into the garages and they find old cars and things like that. It's a lot of fun. I think so. That you're to answer your question, <laughs> roundabout way to answer. Uh, I'd say the cars are certainly the most enjoyable. That is cool, man. It sounds it sounds like a lot of fun. But then having the when times are normal, having those properties bring you income that's also good too it's always have multiple income streams it's very important to have that that foundation for sure yeah, i think yeah. i have a little battery left we're good yeah but so. we also employ a lot of people here too so it's also awesome to you know help employ people here especially right now 100 percent. property in Embigado, we have like a property manager we have a couple cleaning people uh -huh. um that are being that have been able to stay and work you know with total with all of the uh bio security the, the biosecurity protocol we're following everything in the house yeah um you know, we have all the mats, we have all the disinfectants, we have someone cleaning up the common areas all the time. So we've been able to keep those people employed throughout this, which has been most important. For Good us. for you. Good for y'all, for sure. That is super cool. I like I like all these stories. I'm, I love businesses. I love hearing about people, how people start businesses, how they make it successful and that kind of stuff. So it's really cool. If you guys enjoyed this little interview we did, uh, let me know in the comments, let Josh know, give him a thanks. I think we might do some other things. I'm gonna turn the camera off. But if something else happens that's interesting, I want to bring it back on to y'all. Yeah, stay tuned. Buenas, todo bien? Ah, muy bien. Hey, guys, we're going to go head out right now in the, in the Bronco. We're going to go up to this mountain here. And Josh tell me there's some really nice houses up there. Uh, very rich area. So we're going to check that out. And I'm not sure. What's it, what's it called? What part of Miguel is that? El Chocho. El Chocho. El Chocho de Miguel. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Lomo. All right, guys, so we're in a different car. We're in his other car, actually. So uh, he didn't want to take his Bronco because these are super steep roads, and he hasn't tested it out yet. So on the roads yet, which I'm pretty sure the Bronco can make it, but he doesn't want to yeah, have a- Save some gas. Maybe. Save some gas, <laughs> too. No, that's, that's not even a joke. That's reality. You use about a <laughs> gallon to get up one of these right. steep hills. <laughs> so this is, again, this is the reason why I told y'all I don't walk around these areas that much because, I mean, I would definitely be hiking. Yeah, back, back here is not as bad. It's a little flatter uh -huh. in some places. Uh huh. Yeah, people need to walk their dogs in these uh, nice little complexes. houses up here. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it on the curb. You get a good shot. I would need Marco to do this, this hike. He'll keep me motivated. I'll do it with each other. With both of you, I love to. I love to do hikes. All right, we all go on a hike see together. Over here is nicer, nicer units. Nice units over here. So these out here, where the richer people live, it's more like Americanized, I would say, because. You definitely need a vehicle. Well, you don't need a vehicle, but it's better. It's more convenient to have a vehicle out here. It's a really nice house. Yeah, it's nice. I, just, uh, it's super I don't like nice. the cookie cutter white ones. all look the same. I like, uh -huh. like that style anymore. Yeah, most of these people have a car. That's the truth. Carrera 20 with Kai 25 Sur. Correct. Yeah, that's where we are. Find me on the, on the Google Maps, guys. <laughs> this is uh, between Avignon and El Chocho. Avignon and El, El Chocho. Cho. So Josh knows a lot of the area because he because he has a vehicle and because he goes out to the pueblos looking for those vehicles, that kind of stuff. So he's he's has 
covered a lot of ground in his time here. I have my bicycle, so I've gone as far as my bicycle would take me. <laughs> if you get up this hill, then you're you're certified a paisa. Right, right, right. <laughs> I can't get. I can't. I try, I try to my bike to get up to this about this. On part. your bicycle? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful mountains up here, guys. So they got the the closed off uh, communities. And these houses nice. up here will run you between about six and eight million a month for rent. So for rent, so that's between. Fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a month, roughly. So one of these houses, these are actually two-story houses. Yeah, they're huge. They're probably three thousand square feet inside. They're gigantic. Four bedrooms usually. I've never lived in one, but I've been inside of a few. Really nice. And you said how much per month? Uh, these would roughly run you, yeah, between six and eight. Some go up to, like these smaller ones, will probably uh -huh. run you about six. Six a million pesos a month. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and these are larger. They're probably like twice the size. Nice. And those will run you closer to eight to ten. I, I really don't, don't quote me on that, but between six and ten, let's say. So fifteen hundred and twenty-five hundred dollars. Don't quote them. Yeah. How much? How much would it be to buy? Do you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. You're looking close to three hundred grand. Three hundred thousand dollars buy, buy one of these houses. House. Three thousand square foot. That that's probably close to a million dollar house. You can get that on. Oh, that white house. That white house up there. Here. It's a million dollars to yeah, buy that. Maybe more. And that's like a four story or so. It looks like. Yes. Yeah, looks super nice. Out my, out my range. <laughs> but to have, I, I can imagine, up in that house, with this view, we can't yeah, see the view. I wish you could see the actual view. But that dude is up high. With that view, that's like a, man, it's million dollar view. It's entire view south and north. You see every every edge of the valley. For view. sure. We're, we're gonna go up there now. We have a lot of people who watch from California, and I know California prices for real estate are crazy expensive. So like, you guys over there, probably thinking it's, it's a steal. Yeah, million dollar, <laughs> million dollars in San Fran gets you like a five, 500 square foot studio. Right? Exactly, exactly. And here you're going to get like a 5,000 square foot mansion. So. Mansion with a beautiful view and a beautiful country with a beautiful culture. And remember, you're, everything here is way less. Property taxes, utilities, those things are going to save on like crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you guys need help purchasing one of those properties, I have connections, let me know. <laughs> Good idea. The local church. Oh, beautiful this, church. This all used to be country, so this was like you can still see like the remnants of the of the complex. You want to go? No, it's okay. Explore down the street. Yeah, sure. Go wherever you want to take me. You can't see because yeah, no everything's right. blocked off with this construction, yeah. but it's all good. But you can see these houses are more like fincas. Yeah. So this used to be the country, and then rich people were coming up here and buying the properties and making beautiful houses. Like these other houses that look more like fincas, you could probably get for around 600, 500, 600 grand. 600,000 You're really dollars. buying land here, it's very right. expensive. You're buying the land, you're buying the area, because... Yeah. You, you could buy the land and build a house for and a lot cheaper, beautiful house. Sure, you know I mean? the cost of labor and everything is real cheap here. Check out the barbed wires, guys. I don't like that, I think the electric looks a lot better. Sure, sure, sure. So now you get into like springs, it's like literally like a lot of brooks run through here. Beautiful. And guys, clean air. Yeah. Fresh, clean air. Right? Oh yeah, you feel the difference. <laughs> Up here it gets cold though, right? Yeah, at night you're probably talking about like 50, 45 sometimes. 45 degrees I'm gonna Fahrenheit. Speak, I'm gonna speak in Fahrenheit because we're, uh, we're talking to mostly people that are thinking in Fahrenheit now. Yeah. Those videos when they say everything in Celsius and stuff, I have to sit there and commute. Well, <laughs> I used to have to like, you know, Pull sure. out the calculator, pull out the Google, uh, the Google Fahrenheit to Celsius. I hope you guys are liking. Let me know in the video how you guys like this kind of camera work. You know, usually it's me walking on my bicycle. Here, I'm gonna, I'll come right back to you guys. Stay tuned. Yeah. All right, guys, check it out. Fuente Clara. The uh, Josh is telling me this is the most expensive little housing. neighborhood housing, housing area unit complex. complex in Medellin, and that's where James lives. If you guys don't know who James is, look him up. He's a football player, soccer player. He's the number one player in, for Colombia. Yeah, number one player. Plays for Real Madrid. Real Madrid, that's where James lives. Uh, we just got done visiting with him and now we're going to play. I'm playing. All right, look at that tree. It's beautiful. Yeah. Weeping Willow, I think it's called. So if you guys want to be neighbors that's to... Uh, that's a, oh, no. Yeah, that's a... No, that's a house. Okay. Sorry. If you guys want to be neighbors to like James and like famous people, famous Colombians, Come live up in this area. And again, if you guys need help buying a property, let me know. I'll help you out.
birds. <laughs> a lot of bird watching goes on over here. It's like yeah, bird. beautiful birds. And also right here, look at the fox. Yeah. So you got foxes over here. Zorro perro. Actually here, you still you still get sightings of tigrillos, which is the ocelot. The, mini, the small the mini tiger. Yeah. yeah, the mini tigers. Yeah, in English, it's ocelot. So they have mini ti they have tigers here, but they're super tiny like cats. And also, not far from here, in the same... If you go further up here, it's a protected national park. Uh -huh. You went there in the hike. El Salao. Right. That, there's still pumas there. <laughs> but pumas like... Yeah. Like jaguars? Like pumas. Pumas like, over there. Like bobcats. Cougars? Oh, bobcats. Yeah, like bobcats. They're bobcats. still there. Yeah. Okay. They still have sightings on, uh, on, on... They thought they were, uh, didn't exist anymore. Uh-huh. These beautiful fingers. Beautiful. Um, and they put hidden cameras in the forest in the national park. Uh-huh. And they started seeing them everywhere. <laughs> they yeah. thought they weren't there anymore. Because they call, they call cougars in the States pumas as well. Yeah. But it's more, these are like more like bobcat size. But no, they're, no, they're pumas. It's puma. It's a puma. It's the same. The same brown. The brown. They're like a, yeah, like a the tan, cougar. tan color. Oh yeah. my lord. Yeah, there's cougars here. Oh wow. <laughs> Look at there, you can see. What's that? Get a shot of how beautiful the fincas are. This is where it's still very country. Oh yeah, is it the old country house right there, guys? Beautiful. Mom is cooking in the kitchen, I see her. But now they're actually stuck. Now, three years ago, this is where I adopted my dog, you met. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a, there's a refuge up here that the city of Envigado donated to a, to a woman who runs a refuge up here. Uh huh. It's called Hogar Amigo Fiel, if you want to adopt a dog. Hogar Amigo Fiel. That's a, a faithful friend house. Yes. Home. 100, 180 dogs and 80 cats she has there at all times for adoption. Nice. And they're really well taken care of. It's a beautiful place. So, if you guys look at an adopted dog, that's a great place to go. That's where Lulo came from. Instagram or Facebook, Amigo Fiel. Amigo Fiel. Now it's... we just finished building these modern houses up here, which I'm a little in between about. I don't know. I don't, I don't personally like modern <laughs> houses, either, but let us know in the comments if you guys like these type of houses. That, if you have that view. <laughs> oh my Lord. Check it out. Whoa. Look at that view, guys. So this is the view we're talking about, about that million dollar, that million dollar house that we showed y'all. This is what you guys will be buying. You buy the view. <laughs> you want to get out? Nah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know. Don't tell me. Oh, fuck. It wasn't on. <laughs> Guys, I'm a, I'm a retard. I didn't have the camera on. And I, and I got a bunch of good stuff from Josh over here. And uh, I didn't turn the camera on. So, damn it. Oh, well. What did we talk about? Uh, first of all, first of all, the, first about the land in front of you. Let me rewind everything. The good thing is, guys, I'm still young. I still have my memory, so I'm gonna repeat everything I said. So, guys, check it out. So, Josh made an excellent comment about this property <laughs> over here. Uh, as you guys saw, we're in a super high-end area, um, and this guy's here own this this lot here. Just imagine how much that cost, okay? And these are just simple. It's a simple family. Probably had this land for generations, and you see their house over here with their cows. When their time to come to buy to sell this property, Josh mentioned earlier that he, he thinks around two million dollars to buy this property. And yeah, because it keeps going over the mountain, you can't see it. This land keeps. Going it keeps over. going over, goes down with this amazing view. We got this uh, new buildings up here. You got the CDC camera, barbed wire, and that kind of stuff. Tell me in the comments what you guys think about this area. We drove around earlier. Hopefully, I didn't lose you guys on that in that footage. I, I have a GoPro, so I really can't see how it looks when I'm filming. But only when I edit, so we'll Find see. Out. We'll find out together. Anyways, um, I had some questions for Josh, and uh, I asked him. The first question was, "Does he see himself?" And I'm gonna get to car questions, so y'all stay tuned. Don't don't click out because it's super good questions. Do you see yourself living here long term for in Columbia? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, long term, I've been here five years. So that's that's it's long, long, long as longish like for the unforeseen future. Yeah, I think that this is home for me. Okay. I, I, I'll tell you one thing that that uh, that always is. Uh, that was like the big change in my head. When I started to get off the plane in the States, uh -huh. I would feel less at home. And then when I would get off the plane in Medellin, I, my shoulders would relax. Holy crap, that's the same thing happens you, to me. Did it happen to you too? I, like when I go back to the States now, I have a culture shock. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the it, first it blows things. my mind. Like what the heck's going on? Like what's People this about? People honking at each other, yelling at each other, yeah. a lot of aggression. Or not, not, always, not always, but you see just different different things in culture Definitely that aggression, you got so yeah. accustomed to. Yeah being home that here just doesn't exist you know, it doesn't everywhere it, has it doesn't their, exist their pros and cons but for, for me sure. this is this is home but yeah. I eventually I'll probably have hopefully have a home in the states um, you know later on in life that I can go home to because I still love it there and I still have my family and friends are that for I miss, sure. miss a lot for sure but they come here so often that I almost don't miss them that much <laughs> right my friends come very often and my family comes I me mean, who well. wouldn't want to come visit you in a place like this I mean come on <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good crazy. excuse to come see Josh and also be 
in Medellin. That's freaking very, awesome. Very true, especially with all the open bedrooms I have in my place. <laughs> That is so cool. So, and you don't have to wear the mask, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's okay. I mean, we're socially distanced. It looks like we're close, but we're super far well, away. We got about uh, two yards between us. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Two so, years. <laughs> um, what does that say? So, let me ask you the question. Uh, I know uh, the reason why I ask this question. I know somebody in, in the comments going to ask because I didn't ask this in the, about the vehicles. Uh, what would you say? You mentioned you had a, a large margin in um, the vehicle business. What, yeah. what would you say the margin is more um, or less? Okay, how do I best put this? Give you an example of uh, of one car that we did. I'll give you an example of the first the first car we did. Mm -hmm. It was a Toyota 1978 uh, FJ40. Um, we found actually in Medellin. We didn't find the Pueblo. It was already in really good shape. The guy was still driving it, not daily, but probably guys weekend car or something like that. Sure. Um, we bought it for at the time, which was about seven thousand, mm -hmm. which was on the higher end for for one of those trucks. But we wanted one that was already had a good base. So yeah. We didn't have to do crazy restoration. Sorry. Um, so we spent seven thousand on the car, and we put about twenty grand into the um, restoration, uh, including the shipping and tax tags, titling in the states, and all that. Uh -huh. And that's twenty seven, and then we ended up selling for I think between. About forty-four or forty-five thousand, we sold the car for. So the margin was between fifteen and twenty. Don't uh, don't quote me again. Okay. <laughs> but I had to look at numbers again. But the first car we did was about between fifteen and twenty. And that was the very first car y'all did. That was the first one we did. It took us about it took us about six months to get everything done. So did you guys have? I know, right? That bug loves <laughs> you. Did you guys have uh, experience in this before, or you just kind of jumped in no, not knowing what's going to happen? That was the first one. I knew I've known about cars my whole life because I loved. Uh, I grew up loving Chevrolets and Cadillacs and these large American cars, big, big body Chevrolet engines. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anything about the Toyotas, to be honest with you, but I, I did my due diligence. I read up on them. I looked at what the people in the States were buying. Um, the one we sold for 45 with a little more money could have sold for 75, 80, 90. We didn't have the capital nor the time. It's, you know, it's, it's a more tedious process. Um, but you can get, you can get more money for those cars. So you kind of, you kind of saw like, holy crap, you saw these cars here. You, th you saw how much they were selling for, then you saw them in the States, how much they were selling for. You put two two together, made the jump, took the risk, and had a $20,000 profit, more or less, yeah, right. on the first go. On the first go between me and my partner, yeah. And you're hooked. And I was hooked, yeah. And then we did three more cars. That's amazing. We did three more, car three more cars in the, next, in the next two years. So it's not a, you know, I'm not getting rich off this, but sure. I'm living in Colombia. That money goes That money goes far. a long way here. 100%. And at the time, I was living a lot more humble, so felt like so much more you know it that is covered amazing. my bills for two years and, much. and you mentioned the, the video and the video that I, I we did a moment ago where i didn't have the camera on you mentioned this i don't have him repeat it uh you mentioned that um if you were more investment that 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 margin would be even a hundred thousand dollars am i am i gonna accuse a, 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 a murderer if i kill this fly or the guy <laughs> no you're <laughs> good bro now he's gone okay what's up <laughs> Sorry. In the in the video that we we filmed when it wasn't turned on the camera, yep. uh, you mentioned the margin could be a whole lot bigger for more capital. Like around, you said a hundred thousand dollar margin. You can you can make up to that. You got to put in a lot of work on these cars. I mean, <clears throat> there's different levels. There's frame off restoration, and then there's nut and bolt restoration. Mm -hmm. Frame off is like what we do. Is like we take it off the frame, we sand down everything, replace all the instruments, redo the the doors, the interior, um, and usually use the same motor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, but we also rebuild the motor and you know make it look, make it look new. Um, but there's another level which is nut and bolt, which is usually entails putting in a brand new motor. Mm -hmm. um, these huge crate engines they put in these cars that cost you know between five and ten grand. Um, you're also replacing every nut and bolt. I'm talking like every screw on a car. I can't you know just look at the screws inside the inside the door hinges. Right. And you're replacing everything. So it's more tedious, it's more time consuming, but the profits are certainly a lot more. And if you have the capital and the patience, that's where you're going to make the most money in, the, in this business. That's where he mentioned it takes patience and time. So like, like having the capital where you can just put it there and not need it, that's one of the most important things I'm, I'm getting from this business. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. You, need to, you need to have some money that you can sit on. Do you hear? Yeah, why? That's, oh, those, that's the foster dog. That's where I adopted. That's the adoption, dog, uh, dog adoption. That's 180 dogs barking at the same time. 180 dogs barking at a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually so well kept. I wish she was home, but you could see it's beautifully kept. Another day, we're gonna go. Let me know in the comments. If you guys want me to go check out that uh, adoption, uh, dog adoption area with 180 dogs? I'll go check it out for you guys if you guys are interested. Let me know. Yeah, um, yeah that's super cool, man. Yeah. That's so, so yeah, like you said, time, um, capital. If you don't need it right away, if you can invest the time um, and the capital, then you'll get. 
bigger returns. Uh -huh. you know, we were, you know, a small, smaller, you know, we're two people starting from scratch. Um, you know, nobody's rich. Are you guys still in so, business together? Yeah, we still have another, we actually just That's... finished, actually just finished another Toyota. Nice. Um, uh, it's been finished for about two months. He actually moved back here uh -huh. six months ago, uh -huh. but um, he went back to the States uh -huh. and then everything is super close here. So he's going to stay there with his family until things, you know, uh, super cool. open back up here. But he's going to come back and we're going to get that car sent to the States. Send you some pictures. Maybe you can share them. Hell yeah. Um, I'll, I'll help you out, bro. So there you go, guys. I mean, that's that Josh here, the man of business, uh, started three to four businesses already here in Medellin, just in the four years of being here. So five, a lot five, five. five years of being here. He arrived around the same time I arrived. Um, that just shows you guys that if you have a little bit of initiative and, and, and uh, what's the word? Initiative, creativity. Creativity. And patience. And patience. <laughs> yeah. And, and connections. And too. connections for sure. And learn Spanish. Right. That's very important. That's, I would say getting your, but it's not even learning Spanish, it's learning paisa dichos, right? You got to learn like, <laughs> you got you to be able to slide in the jokes that they use with you. Right. And they see, they, they see a foreigner using those jokes and their, their lingo exactly. with them. They're like, whoa. Wait, they're like, they're like, whoa, this guy knows <laughs> yeah, yeah. something. He's been around. I can't take advantage of him so much, you know? So yeah, I agree exactly. with it goes, you. It goes a long way with lowering your prices everywhere and things oh my, like that. That's true. Los dichos, los dichos. Remember, los dichos, which is the, sa the same. The, the expressions. The expressions. Expressions. Yeah. So what's, what's a good tip for how to, how to learn Spanish real quick? <sighs> How I, the yeah. thing is, I lived in Miami for seven years, so... Oh yeah, here he already talked about this. Yeah, I talked about this. So they th yeah. thought I was Spanish. So I picked up things, and then I came here, and I would just... Immersion. It was, immer it was a literal immersion. I didn't pick up a book or take a class uh -huh. or anything. Not to say it's the best way for everybody, uh -huh. but for me, my Spanish is, is somewhat fluent now. Just in, in two years, I was speaking pretty fluently. So guys, this video is getting long. I know it is. So I want to do my, my outro, or whatever it's called. Um, Again, you guys heard from Josh, just did multiple businesses. So if you guys have some creativity and some initiative and patience, you can come to Columbia, Columbia see a market and just go for it. Uh, but also have capital. That's, that's super important as well. Yeah. So <laughs> hard night not getting business loans here as a foreigner. Remember, thing, that's one thing very important. Things are cash here, you know? It's cash. So you need to come with the yeah. capital, like we said. All right, you're right. That's part of did what you, you said. Did you start a, a SAS here? Did you have, yeah, a, yeah, you have yeah. a common to get, business? To get my visa, my, my tourism company. Okay, so that's how you get your visa. visa. I opened the tour. Kind of like what I did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't just open it to get the visa. I also ran it. And a lot of people open the company just to get the visa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, no secret. No secret. Yeah, no secret. yeah, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all take care. I'm going to hang out with Josh some more. If uh, more interesting stuff comes, I might make a different video uh, and not make this super long. So you guys take care. Stay positive. Positive. Anything, anything, anything to say, Josh? No. Um, if anybody's interested in, you know, any type of classic cars or any more questions, I'm I don't, I don't hog the information I'm willing to share, so just ask David. And uh, he's super free. He's super free with his, his information. I told him a lot of people would, would want to, would not want to give this out because thinking of the competition, he's like, no, he doesn't care. Everybody. There's room for everybody. That's a great mindset to have for sure. So you guys take care. Comment below what you guys think. Any kind of questions, that kind of stuff. Y'all take care.